it's Keith Barry here and my guest on this week's Brain Hacker episode is of course Rory Best. How are you Rory? I'm good Keith, how are you? I'm fantastic, thank you. Yes, thank you for joining me here today. I can see it's a beautiful sunny day up there so I won't hold you up for too long. Um, so how have you been keeping during all this crazy lockdown stuff? Uh, not too bad. Uh, it's been, it's obviously been longer, longer than, than any of us thought but it's been quite good to to reconnect with the family, if you like, after a long rugby career of them potentially becoming uh, coming second best yeah. to that. So it's it's been nice spend a bit of time with them, have the weekends, not have the the pull of having to be here, there, and everywhere. So look, there's been some positives. Um, ultimately, you do miss the interactions and the socialising, especially at this time of year of the Six Nations. Yeah. So I think. You know, I want to ask you some questions that potentially you might not expect and some questions that relate to rugby and not rugby. So I want to start here. What is the strangest coincidence that you've ever had? So if you think back, it can be rugby related, non-rugby related. What's like the craziest coincidence that you can remember, perhaps that you answered a phone and you kind of knew who was there or perhaps, you know, just some mad, crazy coincidence that really surprised you and shocked you in the moment? Uh, oh, flip! Can I remember the details of these things? Um, <laughs> I, over over my uh, certainly over my rugby career, there would have been a lot of times when I would have dreamt something and then kind of used it uh, in some shape or form, whether it was a a suggestion around a tactic or um, some of the time it was a team talk. You know what what angle I'd go at that week, and I, and I would be a little bit stuck. And then I would be, I would have a dream and sort of almost like a bit of a premonition where we go, yeah, why didn't I think of that angle before? So they were the sort of trying to think off the cuff, but they would have been the sort of main ones. And and some of those premonitions actually came true then. So if you thought of something perhaps the night before, then the next day that play would actually happen. Yeah. And there would be, I think that the weirdest ones are when you get, um, the bangs to the head and you get the deja vu like you've been here before like they're the where it feels like a dream but some of those premonitions would have been and and even in team talks where you're going right what am i going to say the next day and you would have a a bit of a dream about an angle to go on and you, like you know yourself you've spoken to people and spoken in companies and spoken in crowds and you feel after it you always have a good gauge of how it went and sometimes it would be something would be in your head from the night before, from your dream, and you would just go with it, and you always had a good sense that it was it was a, I suppose something that everyone could buy into, which is the main thing. Well, that's really interesting to me that you mentioned kind of deja vu and dreams because you didn't even know we were going to talk about this right now, right? No. Nope. Because here's the mad thing. I had a dream last night specifically about you. Now, I induced my own dream, okay? Because I have the ability to do that as a hypnotherapist. I know that we, like, we've spoken before that for a long time you're having trouble with sleep and, and then your sleep has obviously gotten a lot better over time. But I actually can induce dreams, okay? And I had a little dream about this conversation that we're having right now, believe it or not. And I wrote something down and I put it inside this envelope. Now, let me just open this up. Just give you a little peek for a second inside, okay? Uh, there we go. You can see that there's a piece of paper down there, yeah? Yep. We're going to get back to that in a moment, okay? So in my dream, Rory, in my dream, you were in the dream, okay? Now, don't worry, it wasn't that kind of dream. But <laughs> I want you to name out loud in the conversation in our dream, you said to me a random word. Now, it wasn't a name and it wasn't a place. It was literally just a random word. So think of a random word. And if you want, you can change your mind to another random word because that's what I got you to do in the dream. So when you've got a random word in mind, just name it out loud. Um, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> now, here's the crazy thing, right? Technically, I told you it wasn't a name, but it's interesting because if you think about Mickey Mouse, it's actually two names and technically they're fictional so it's not a real name but ultimately here's the crazy thing this envelope you can see it it's been in full view and i want you to see if you were here in person you would be able to look all the way around and that is fully sealed all the way around okay there's no way in no way out if i just open this up i want to make sure that you can see this there's the piece of paper down there and if you're here in person you would take that out yourself but of course i have to do it for you and i'll take it out and i'll just hold it up right to the camera like this i'll do this super slow because in my dream we had a conversation i got you to name a word read that out loud <laughs> rory will say mickey mouse 
<laughs> Hence the reason I'm, I was very nervous coming onto this call, Keith. <laughs> but don't worry, you you only had Mickey Mouse inside your head, so it's fine. So listen to me. T tell me, since you retired, have you been more hands on in the farm? Uh, yeah, trying to be. Uh, I'm really enjoying the the cattle. Was always something that. The Aberdeen Angus we have at home was something that I did as a as a bit of release from the pressure of playing rugby, and I've tried to get more involved in that. I've had um, the kids up helping me halter train some of the young ones, and um, yeah, look, it's something. It's actually a great way to reconnect with my dad as well because he loves the cattle side of it, and it's something that is a lot easier when there's two of you doing it. Yeah, I saw a great documentary recently, actually, uh, about farming and the sustainability of farming. Um, and there was this whole documentary, I think it's called Kiss the Ground with Woody Harrelson uh, voiceover in it. I don't know if you have you seen that documentary yet? No. Nope. It's, it's very interesting, actually. Now, Woody, I know Woody Har Harrelson, and he's a real like uh, uh, advocate, I suppose, for veganism. But actually, it wasn't a push towards veganism. It was uh, just a, a method, if you like, for farming in order to pull down carbon dioxide from the air. And it involved cattle and it involved... Uh, you know, certain ways to look after uh, the soil. So I'm just interested, like that aside, is there any documentaries that you've seen in the last few months or even indeed a few years that really kind of moved you? Uh, yeah, um, I really enjoyed the uh, the Michael Jordan one. Um, name escapes me now, but I really, really liked it. Um, yeah, I heard it's fantastic. I haven't seen it yet. So what was it that resonated with you in the Michael Jordan documentary? Um, I think there was probably the little bit where whenever one of the players kind of said that they felt on a personal level that Michael Jordan just wasn't a nice person and, and he was watching this back and it kind of, you could see it upset him that people couldn't differentiate between the guy on the court that wanted to win at all costs versus the person off it. Um, and that I, I kind of, I suppose coming from a sports background, I kind of saw that as well and how when you're driven to be the best that sometimes you can actually isolate yourself a little bit well on that note i know yeah obviously now that you're retired from rugby international rugby for me I, I was wondering the question when i was coming on here do you find it difficult now to commentate on players that uh, perhaps you've played with for many years and you have to now you know perhaps be critical of them in ways that maybe you weren't critical of them before yeah i think there is that i suppose the way i like to approach it is instead of kind of being overly negative towards an individual it's kind of saying you know what tactically or tactically could the players do better could the team do better um and trying to focus on on where they go and, and how they get there rather than i think the easy thing to do is to go oh player x is played crap is crap um where i kind of see it it, it's not something that I liked whenever I played, whenever former players just took the easy route and, and basically abused you um, and never actually scraped back the layers because look, look, anyone can watch a game and go, he didn't play well, but it takes somebody with knowledge to sort of go, well, he didn't play well. This is why. Here's reasons that actually sometimes will justify a decision that a player made or how a team is going and to sort of to kind of get into the depths of, of why it's happening and a little bit from your knowledge of being in an, in an environment, but also from watching the game and, and being technically and tactically astute. Well, well, I suppose just on that note, just as a fan of rugby, and I'm talking about rugby in general, so I'm not talking about the Irish team here, I'm not a fan of the new kicking game. OK, and we're not going to labor too long on rugby here because I know there's some people who are here who are tuning in to listen to Rory and uh, the person rather than Rory, the rugby player. But just on that note, what is your opinion of this new kicking game? I just personally find it inherently boring. But do you agree with that as a tactic or do you find that it's just, uh, you know, also a boring tactic? Uh, yeah, look, I think you get whenever it's just aimless kicking, um, I think when you get teams that kick for a reason and the reason is to get territory to get field position and once they get that that they actually have a go you know i think i can stomach it but there's no doubt that um this just aimless hack it down the middle no contestable no real skill involved bar the fact that they can put boot to ball pretty well 
um, can be a bit much. And uh, I think it was over the autumn, it was very kicking. Then back to the leagues, both leagues, the, the Premiership and the Pro 14 were very kicking orientated. And then it went to the European Cup and it was almost like get your best players in the pitch. And it was great rugby, you know, tactical kicking. But yeah. the game was played, which is what everyone wants to see. Yeah, I just think of the international rugby, it seems a lot of that aimless kicking is going on at the moment. So, uh, but look, we'll leave that for another day. Now, tell me this, how do you set goals for yourself? Like right now, at this moment in time in your life, have you set some goals for yourself? Or are you just giving yourself this period to relax and maybe just take time to, to allow those goals to come to you? So uh, I'm just interested in your, um, your tactics, if you like, on goal setting. Yeah, I think as you know, Keith, from the time that we work together in the that sort of last two, three years of my career. I'm very sort of process orientated. So even now, um, I'll have a 10 year kind of rough outline of, of where I want to go and what I want to look like in 10 years. Um, and that'll be from a business side of things, from friends, family, various activities, um, whatever it is, I'll have that down. Then it'll be an annual and then month to month, I'll sit down, ironically enough, I just finished doing for the end of March today and that'll take me take me right through. And it's just, that's a bit more obviously specific. By the end of the month, I want to have achieved X, Y, and Z um, and whatever that is. So look, that is, it's always been me. It's always, it's been the way I've been wired, certainly in, in the last 10 years. So on that note, give us a peek behind the curtain. People always want to see a peek behind my curtain and what I do. So give us one goal that you've set yourself, either short term, medium term, or long term. One that you don't mind sharing, obviously, with us. Um, that I want to be enrolled in a in a bit of a leadership course to sort of see if if I can bring everything I learned from being a, a player within a a team, a successful team, and and to been a captain of both those teams over the years and. And how that now transfers into the into the business side of things. So, I've I've sent off to get, I basically sent off the application form, and and my goal for this month is to chase that up to see what aspects of that of that sort of leadership side that that I can do that interest me and and where I can keep developing that side of my life. But I think that's very inspiring for people watching right now that even somebody at yourself who has been and is such a great leader that you're continuously self-developing. And you know, where I come from all the time is continuous self-development. So I think it's inspiring that you're doing that. And I think people who are watching will be encouraged by that, that they should perhaps do the same because you know, the world is at our fingertips now. You can do a lot of this stuff online. So you can do it you know, before or after the farming in the day and when you've spent time with family, you can put in that extra time. And I think that's what people need to realize that they can do the same. Yeah, totally. And, and it is about continued development, you know, something that it was, it's easy when you're playing rugby and, and that's obviously what I'm grounded in because you see the results within seven days. If you work hard and, and fix a few things, you can see an instant, almost an instant impact on that. Now in, in this side of my life and my journey, I have to realize that it's a bit longer, but you can also put in the effort and you can sort of, this continual development will hopefully reap rewards. Yeah, no, I'm sure it will. I, I think, look, even for me, I continuously set and reset goals. A lot of people don't realize you can go back to your goals, you can reset them, you can change them over time. So for example, I'll give you an example. I was just talking to somebody the other day about goal setting. When I was 21, I decided that if I wasn't a full-time entertainer slash mentalist magician, by the time I was 30, then I would pack it in and do something else. Now, luckily for me, because I set those goals and I really went on super activity mode, uh, I achieved that seven years in advance being 30. So I, uh, I started full time when I was 23. So my new thing, so also when I was about 23, I decided I want to be debt free by 60. That was my thing, debt free by 60. And just this year, I just decided, well, why am I going to wait till I'm 60? So now that I'm 44, my new thing is debt free by 50. So I've given myself six years uh, to get the mortgages paid off and try and get myself debt free. So I think it's important that people realize, you know, that you can continuously set goals for yourself and you can have some zany goals as well. So one of my zany goals and dreams is to climb Kilimanjaro in my underpants with Wim Hof, who's otherwise known as the Iceman. So we've talked about Wim Hof before. Um, have you any zany or crazy adventurous dreams that you want to fulfill? Uh, you know, I'm not sure it's, it's that one, but... 
I don't a hundred percent know what it looks like, but I had a, a very interesting conversation with um, the guys at Cancer Fund for Children this week, and that was around look. I want to do something to really challenge myself. Um, I don't exactly know what it looks like, but I want to do something that will help them. That people will stand up and go, "Whoa, my goodness!" Right, that deserves to put a few pounds towards or euros towards. So. Um, they're a way to think of a few ideas. I'm not 100% sure what this is going to be, but I want it to be something um, really challenging. And I think that's probably going to be um, one of my goals that a year ago, if you'd have said you're going to do this, I would have been like, oh, not a chance. Um, so, yeah, that will, well, I'll keep you posted on that one. Yeah, do, please. And, and look, it's a, it's a great cause. And again, I think a lot of people need to find a purpose to enable them to do these zany things that sometimes they wouldn't ordinarily do. Um, you know, mindfulness is a real topic at the moment. I'm just interested, you know, on, in, like everybody, I'm sure you have stressful moments, you have anxious moments. What do you do in those moments to help yourself? Is, is there any tool that you use, a technique that you use perhaps uh, in order to kind of clear your mind? Um, I, I'll take a, a breath, a big breath, um, and try to sort of focus on the, on the exhale. Um, and then I'll generally try to kind of picture myself in a good place, whatever that looks like. And, you know, that might be um, with my family. It might be on holidays. It might be in the sunshine. I do enjoy the sun. Um, and that'll be the way that, that I'll de-stress. Um, the breath was always really, really important to me whenever I uh, whenever I played. You know, something that we talked a lot about yeah. when we were doing our stuff is something just to, to continually refocus me. And I've, and I've tried to bring that in to everyday life. It's harder, I find, ironically enough, in everyday life because the the stress doesn't hit you as instantaneously as it did when you played rugby. You know, lose a line out, there's your moment, right? Yeah. I'm stressed. Whereas now it could be a buildup of having to homeschool for a full day and it mightn't get to you till about five or six o'clock at night. Um, but you still have to be aware of it. And look, I'm, I'm trying. I'm not 100% as aware as I would have been when I played sport. Um, but certainly that would be one just to, to breathe and then to, to almost picture myself in, in that kind of happy place or where I want to be or you know, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I think it's important for people to realize that, you know, players such as yourself, business people all around the world, and myself included, use creative visualization on a daily basis, which is really what you're talking about. And, you know, creative visualization for anybody who, who perhaps hasn't come across it before is really allowing your subconscious mind to quieten, and that's the breath work, and then allowing yourself to go to that place that you've visualized so many times that you can change quickly uh, the neurology of the brain and ultimately bring in a different emotion into different places in the body. As a matter of fact, I've come up with a new technique. I'll share it with you uh, soon. Um, uh, you know, I'll share it with everybody soon. Soon, but I'll, I'll tell you off camera about it, Rory, a new technique that I've come up with uh, because I'll be talking about it a little bit more in about six months down the line. So look, before we finish up, is there any piece of technology that you have that you think you couldn't live without? Uh, oh, probably my phone, unfortunately, as much as I try to stay off the thing. The phone <laughs> is just something that is, it's amazing how you kind of feel when you go anywhere without it, you feel lost. Um, and even from a pure general knowledge point of view, like a lot of them, a lot of the general knowledge that I had stored up is kind of gone. And anytime I need to know anything, it's just quickly on to on to Google or on to Safari and, and search for it. So yeah, I would probably struggle with my phone. Well, well, real quickly then, if there is an app to, that you were to recommend from your phone, what's your go-to app? Whether it's to do with mindfulness or business or research or uh, reading, anything at all. What's what's kind of your go-to app? Uh, I would probably Sky Sports News would be my, and I will go through most of the sports, soccer, rugby, golf, tennis, the whole, the, the works and look through it. Interesting. I didn't know that you're, you're uh, such a fan of other sports. So do you find yourself getting absorbed Ben? then like day in, day out by watching all of these different sports? Yeah, I would watch. It's getting the time now, and I'm actually now that the kids are a bit older, it's getting the TV to watch it. But um, like even the other morning, I was up, I was up early, and uh, I watched the the women's Australian Open. 
um, from Melbourne. Uh, it was actually interesting to see crowds there, but just I was up, nobody else was up, so I was sitting and having a cup of coffee, and I just watched that entire game, and it was fascinating. Yeah, it's great to see how they're doing down there. Look, at least I suppose international rugby is still going ahead on this side of the pond, albeit uh, without spectators. So we have something to look forward to. Um, you know, to wrap it up, though, I have one final question for you. What is the closest thing that you've experienced to real magic? I know that's a difficult question to answer. Uh, I think... I think probably the, the what you did to me on the on the stage at my testimonial, which um, not only scared the life out of me, but uh, it kind of it was it was very impressive. Should we say? I yeah, had you explain exactly what you did because yeah. to be honest, it was all a bit of a flash for me. <laughs> yeah, well, anybody who, who didn't uh, see it, which would be a lot of people actually, because I don't think it's out there in YouTube land. I, at the start, I formulated this crazy trick to get you on stage, which was an anagram that formed your name. And then when I brought you up on stage, I did a, a trick where I hit a, a spike underneath one of four polystyrene cups who got mixed up loads of times. And then ultimately, I slammed your hand down a bunch of times, which was, by the way, as scary for me as it was for you, because <laughs> if I put a spike through your hand as opposed to a, just a normal spectator's hand, I think I would have been in a lot more trouble than I ordinarily would have been, you know? Um, on that note, actually, one final, final question. What's the silliest injury that you've ever had? Like, if you look at an injury that happened to you, maybe one that people don't know about, maybe you'd had a couple of drinks, or maybe you didn't, and maybe you just slipped. Like, is there any injury you look back on and go, that was just a silly injury to get? Uh, my neck injury that kept me out for, for about five months ended up, no, it was probably an accumulation of everything, but... I'd been back training, been doing everything in the gym. And then I went off to Edinburgh uh, to a friend's wedding. I probably had a bit too much to drink. And um, it was a, a friend that I did ag studied agriculture with at Newcastle. And we were drinking out of welly boots and all sorts of <laughs> silly things you do when you're a bit younger. Um, next morning, I got up into the shower, turned it off, turned like that to get out. And something just went bang right down my neck. I fell backwards out, sort of oh. got myself rolled over, crawled in uh, to the bedroom, sort of got myself dressed. My wife had come back from a walk and she thought that I was messing around. And I ended up sort of in the long and short of it. it, took me a week lying on the wooden floor at home before they could put me in the scanner to find out what was wrong with me. And uh, five months later, I eventually played rugby again. Um, but it was, uh, it was a nasty enough injury. But when you tell people that I fell out of a shower or it happened turning the shower off. People laugh at you and go, all right, okay, we understand you're at the wedding, but what else are you up to? But that is the, that's the truth of it. But injuries can come from, from silly places, as they say. So listen, a quick one before we go. This is important for everybody to realize. I asked Rory, before we began this Brain Hacker show, I asked you to go onto your phone and uh, keep your phone beneath like camera level, not let me see. And I asked you to uh, just Google any player, any rugby player in history. And there is no way right now that I could know that player. Would you agree with that? I would agree, yeah. Okay, good. So I want you to focus on the player and I'm gonna ask you three questions. And these three questions are gonna give me an insight into potentially who this person might be, okay? So I'm gonna ask you a couple of would you rather questions, okay? Would you rather, I know this sounds crazy that this is gonna help me get an insight, but would you rather pizza or pasta? Pizza. Pizza, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Earls or Sexton? <laughs> oh, very unfair. That's harder than pizza or pasta. Um, oh, can I have them both? Is that, is that an okay, option? Okay, you can have them both. I'll let you off the hook with that one, okay? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then finally, soccer or tennis? Soccer. Okay, done. So this tells me immediately that this is a person who's not currently playing. Is that correct? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, they're more from the past than the present. Uh, look at me, Z-Y-X-W-V-U-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-H-D-F-E-D-C-B-A. This person's name starts with an either an S or a T. Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to... I'm not sure. What? I'm writing something down and I'm like, I'm amazed that this might, like, if this is it, I'll even prove it <laughs> myself. 
There is no way. I want people to know that we, like, even though we, we know each other, we haven't set anything up, there's no way I could have known this, right? No, absolutely not. Okay, hold this up here in full view. <laughs> Who are you thinking of? Am I holding up? <laughs> Who are you thinking of? Simon Gagan. Just like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I even have to, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Oh yeah, hold it up a bit closer and we'll, it'll zoom in. Yeah, Ooh, maybe there it is right there. Can you see it? Just about see it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that might be better. Oh, there it is there, yeah, Simon Gagel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Rory Best, I was just inside your head. Tell us how people can get a hold of you on Instagram. It's at Rory Best 2 I believe. It is, yep. Yeah. And, and watch out for Rory if you want to get in touch with him with his new leadership course, which will be available, I'm assuming, from you yourself within uh, probably six months of this. Uh, but I'm sure people will need to get a hold of you in advance of that to make sure that they can book Rory Best for their next event. All right. Thanks so much, Rory. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks.